So, hello everyone. Uh, yeah, I'm Ivo, this is Matthijs from Primed. I'm from GoData Driven. I'm going to talk about the stuff that we've been doing at uh, Regio Lab. So, uh, very much thanks for having us. So, Regio Lab is a uh, consortium of local or regional, I should say, uh, Dutch news providers. Um, we've been implementing a couple of data-driven pilots there. Uh, the, uh, the regional news providers uh, should also innovate. Um, and I'm going to tell a little bit about the pilots, and Matthijs is going to tell a little bit about uh, Primed.io, which is the personalization platform that we've been using for this. Okay, so Regelab, if you're, from, uh, if you're Dutch, you probably recognize uh, these names and icons. Um, so it's a consortium of, uh, of news providers. It's headed by Omroep Gelderland. So uh, we are going to Arnhem uh, now and then to work together uh, at Omroep Gelderland. And uh, as we speak, more and more of these news providers are uh, hooking into the system and uh, providing the data uh, so that they can also make use of, uh, of, the, of the modeling that we do. And so the idea is to innovate using data. And it's important for the regional news providers to remain relevant. Because there's so much news, there's so much technology nowadays. Uh, the regional providers they must also use their data to remain relevant for their audience. And they have a very special role. Eh? They're really, really regional news providers. Um, and yeah, the, the way that we did this was just by really, and that, that's actually the main characteristic of this project, really by doing it. So, uh, so just implement the stuff. So none of us is like full-time committed on this project. Uh, but still, we get together a couple of times per month in Arnhem, uh, and we, uh, we just make this happen. And I think that's, uh, that's a really cool... Uh, part of it. So this is us in an old church in Arnhem, uh, or at least it's uh, me, I think you were at more exotic uh, places at that time. Um, other uh, members of Primed and uh, of Omroep Gelderland, an editor is sitting at the table. It's important that uh, editors are actively involved as well, because they're going to use also the data products that we uh, develop. A uh, picture was taken by Just for Vaart, the project manager. Uh, we have a rich history with him at the NPO. Uh, actually, Vincent uh, was talking about some of the stuff that he did with him there. So I'm really happy uh, to continue the collaboration. Three different pilots uh, we have implemented. So we, we made a news map. Uh, we did some experiments with different uh, headlines, so variations of headlines for the same news article. And of course, we made uh, recommendations. And I will elaborate on each uh, three of those uh, right now. Uh, so this is a news map. So this is actually the, the most, uh, I would say, free-form data product that we made for the editors of uh, Omroep Gelderland. I don't have any hard results or, or, or whatever on this. It's, it's just we hope uh, that they're going to use this so they ca can see in the red dots uh, where the articles took place that they write. So in the, in the content management system, they have to click on a map, uh, you know, accompanying the news article saying, okay, this news applies to this place. Um, and then they can see here an overview of where the most articles are written uh, and where the users come from in blue who actually read those articles. Uh, and yeah, the idea is, like for uh, in this example, you immediately see that there is a blind spot. So there are whole regions of the province that are not being covered. Uh, so you can immediately see that you can make more relevant content by, uh, by writing something about that region. Um, but yeah, so we have to see uh, in, uh, to what extent they're going to use it. We just make sure that this runs and that it's sufficient. Um, about experimenting with different headlines. So uh, they, the, this feature was built into their content management system. So as opposed to what they usually do, just write a headline for the news article. Uh, there is now also the option to write an alternative headline. So it's you know, it's funny they have to think about, to think harder about what they could alternatively maybe do. Um, and uh, whenever they, they, they write two of, the, of those headlines, uh, this is uh, submitted also to Primed, and the Primed platform takes care of surfing the, the different headlines to a disjoint group of, uh, well, bi unbiased uh, groups, of course. Um, and we, you know, this screams for a bandit approach. Of course, to uh, 
uh, online, find out what is, uh, what is the best model, but we currently have separated, like surfing the headlines and collecting the metrics, so we didn't integrate that yet. So instead we use an old school statistic uh, saying that, you know, after a couple of clicks on each of the variants, we are certain, up to a certain extent, that the difference that uh, exists between the two headlines is an actual difference. And this applies most of the time, but we've also seen this week uh, in the Ajax match that it also can go wrong. But uh, uh, usually uh, you're right when you uh, do such a thing. Uh, and actually we made some uh, computations for the month of March. Uh, by doing this, uh, th more than 13,000 more articles have been read. Uh, so we're not interested in clicks, we're interested in article reads. Uh, so I'm um, happy to see that articles are read more frequently by using uh, two different headlines. So if we would do this for the whole catalog of all the news articles, uh, this could increase to more than 200,000 reads per month uh, extra for Omroep Geldland, and I think that's, that's a good uh, result for them. Then, of course, we're, uh, we also make recommendations. So if you uh, visit the website, you visit it a couple of times, then you see uh, a couple of uh, recommendations for news articles. And also here we focus on like, really quickly develop these, uh, these models, put it into production and just measure how many articles are read for, e for each of the, of the variants. So I'm not going to spend like, weeks or uh, I don't know how much time uh, making a very elaborate algorithm. So we just started with Spark uh, collaborative filter and tried to put it in production as fast as possible and then just measure uh, the, the results. But on top of that, uh, right now what we have running is uh, also a time decay factor on the scores. So uh, I exper experimented with a couple of time decay factors like a Gaussian decay or a linear decay. Uh, we didn't, didn't want to do exponential, you know, we, we, the, 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 the articles of the last couple of days, we want those to remain relevant. It turned out in the first set of experiments that a, a Gaussian decay with standard deviation of three days was actually uh, satisfactory for us. And because eh, it's a regional news provider, we think that uh, the, the, the geography also plays an important role. And we have the article location and sometimes we also have the user location. Um, so, in, uh, in, the, in this example, if I, was, uh, if I was the one who was reading those yellow uh, articles, then the article that would be recommended to me by the geographic rec uh, recommender would be the one that is closest in the current version to the median location which I'm uh, reading. Uh, this is, of course, a very simple approach, so uh, next week we're going to put um, a more elaborate algorithm for that online. Um, but yeah, this is what we have been experimenting with. Uh, and this is then how I do it, uh, what, my, uh, what my life looks like when I'm working on this. Uh, this, uh, this is my version of the primed uh, architecture. <laughs> uh, very, not very good at, uh, at that. But, uh, so this is the primed platform. So we use ClickHouse as a data warehousing uh, or a database uh, solution. Uh, I can uh, write Python packages. Uh, using PySpark that gets the data from there, which I can then pip install into uh, uh, Docker images, push that to a registry, uh, and pull that uh, on a Kubernetes cluster uh, in, in my jobs, to run my jobs on the cluster. Uh, this is a uh, well, pretty, uh, pretty nice uh, setup. It runs on Google Cloud, although in principle you're cloud agnostic, uh, right? Um, but uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, and then, you know, the, the first thing you do, of course, is pull in the data. Then it's up to me to do some modeling. In this case, it boils down to, uh, for a certain device uh, and a certain article, uh, compute a certain score. Um, and then I can uh, in interface to Primed. So there is a Python API uh, that I can talk to and that I can just push uh, the, the scores to that I computed. Uh, and I can, I can make experiments, I can make uh, campaigns, I can create models, I can give names to those models, and then uh, all the, the, the feedback will be stored again in, uh, in, in ClickHouse, and then I can compute metrics from that. Some results. Um, so we are interested in, the, uh, in particular, the number of articles that have been read. Uh, and because we have currently uh, recommendations only on the homepage, 
uh, we have been measuring like the number of clicks and the number of reads from the homepage. So uh, the articles can also be sent via social channels, for example, and then you skip the homepage, but that we don't take into account here. Um, uh, we have a null control group, so that's a group of people who don't get any recommendations, and we have a random control group that gets, well, random recommendations, of course. Um, and what we see is, you know, if you have uh, if you have random recommendations, that already improves over not having any recommendations. And then our best model until now, which is that's a basic collaborative filter from Spark, um, with a uh, time decay, a Gaussian time decay, with standard deviation of three days on top of that, uh, performs best. So ge the geog geography is not uh, the best one yet. So that's, uh, well, that's a pity, but on the upside, we are actually uh, yeah, improving on, uh, on the number of reads and the number of clicks on the website, so that is nice. And actually, uh, you know, right now we, are, we have come to the, uh, to the situation that we have all the components in place. You know, in the, in the meantime, uh, things have broken and uh, bugs have been fixed, etc. And now yeah, we're really getting up to steam. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, and, uh, we're going to do a lot of modeling. There's still a lot of low-hanging fruit that I can uh, that I can eat. Uh, so, f uh, for example, improve the geography uh, recommender because if you think of it and if you look at this, there is no such thing as the location of an article or of a user. So, uh, or, uh, if this is a certain user, it has been reading these articles. Uh, so instead, I do a DB scan clustering. Uh, uh, you know, be robust against those outliers, identify a couple of clusters and then base my score on that. And I, uh, we can use bandits here as well, and we can use the, the, the text of the articles. So all that is uh, still to be done. And uh, I believe and hope that we can improve the, the metrics any further. Uh, so this is then, for me, the last slide uh, to conclude before I give the, the word to Matthijs. Uh, so this is uh, the traffic the unique devices per day that we see on the website. Um, here we had some issues uh, with the data collection, so I, uh, I hope you uh, forgive me that I left these out to uh, fit this linear trend. And uh, well, let's work hard to, uh, to keep this going as it does. Matthijs. Thank you very much, uh, Ivo. Uh, let me try to not forget putting the microphone down. Uh, usually when I hold a microphone, I end up keeping it down at some point because I get too absorbed in the story. Um, but please remind me if you can't hear me. So um, just let me start. Uh, we've seen right now, we've seen what we're doing at uh, Regiolab as well as uh, the models that uh, Ivo has been using to sort of increase or obtain the goals that we've been after. And what I'm going to talk about a little bit now is the engineering that went into it. So. Basically, to frame a little bit what I'm going to talk about is we have basically this, what we call a uh, data science loop, where we have a user at the top where it all starts. And the user essentially exposes behavior to us that we can collect as data. This data, uh, we can evaluate our KPIs on, such as click-through rate or read-through rates, if we want to know uh, how many articles uh, a user actually ends up reading to the end. And um, we use this information, so we use these KPIs and that data to train models. Now, once we've trained these models, we're not entirely there yet. We need to put these models into production or deploy them so that they can find their way back to the end user. So today, I'll just be talking about two steps and mainly on the delivery step at the top. So bringing the model predictions to an end user is what I call delivery. Uh, and it's, it'll be the topic of, uh, of this uh, talk. So when Regiolab came to us, in the end, uh, GoData Driven and uh, Primed, uh, they had two questions. Uh, so the first thing was that they wanted to be able to iterate quickly. They said, okay, it's really great if you guys can come up with one model, uh, but we don't really know if that model will be sort of um, describing behavior properly. So instead of having one model, we want to be able to try various different models, one after the other, and do that very quickly so that we can learn from each generation and improve as we go. Now the other thing is that there were multiple use cases. So we're talking recommendations right now, we're talking about different 
titles. So uh, if you come onto the page, you might see the same articles as someone else, but you might get different titles. So these two aspects of the question sort of drove, uh, drove our efforts into engineering the solution. Now, another few small details when you think of regional broadcasters or regional news, uh, you might make the mistake of thinking that it's small volume, but in reality we see about 1,500, uh, 1.5 million vi unique visitors every week, and there's about 2,000 articles being published. We also have a lot of peaks in our traffic because as push notifications go out, uh, we can see that you know uh, peaks of 14,000 requests per minute are not unusual. It says RPS, but that should be RPM actually. So the the challenge becomes to serve this type of tra traffic whilst maintaining low latencies. Because if a user comes onto the page and then the recommendations are being served to them 10 seconds later, well, we're a bit too late, right? So we're adhering to about 100 milliseconds at P99 uh, SLA. And I want to talk about some approaches that we tried and the one that we eventually sort of settled on. So our first approach was this one, very simple. I think this is the, uh, the baseline, sort of how you go from a model and deploying that to production. Um, you have your user uh, generating your data, and you use that to craft a model in an iterative process offline. And well, we figured that a good way of bringing that to an online environment would be to dockerize the model put it behind the REST API and to allow the client that the user is logged into, this could be a web browser or a mobile app, to perform REST calls to the API and then to get a score back. I mean, that sounds very reasonable, um, but there's a big problem with this approach. And actually, uh, the big problem is that there's a conceptual mismatch. So if I put my model online in this way and I have a collaborative filter, I'm not really going to get a list of recommendations back. What I'm going to get back is a probability that this user and item combination is, uh, is considered relevant, a prediction that this user will find this item relevant. But if my use case is to show a number of recommendations, so a list of recommendations, um, it will not do that I have a probability between a user and an item. So there's a conceptual problem here. And it's not just that, it's also when I start solving this problem and I say, okay, well, my API then just needs to loop over the articles that I have and then sort of score that particular user for all the combinations of articles that we have, it becomes really difficult to guarantee these latencies that we, we need to adhere to. Plus that it becomes very difficult to sort of keep in mind, you know, when the new articles are being published or they're being mutated or they're being deleted, to sort of make sure that our API keeps up to date with this uh, sort of um, process. So we came up with a different design. Uh, it has its own flaws, um, but what we came up with, and Evo actually sort of uh, went over it a little bit, is that we still have the user generating data that we collect and that we, or Evo actually, can use to generate models, craft models. But now we have a step in the middle where we need to score the model. We pre-calculate all the possible combinations that might occur, and we store these in a prediction store, uh, say Redis. And now, actually, when I do a REST call, I have a conceptual match. I can get a list back. So I've gone from having to call the API using actually a user ID and an item ID to get back a predicted relevance between this combination, I've gone to being able to call the API when a user hits the home page and give back a list of recommendations. So another very nice property of this is that I can now guarantee latencies and it's relatively easy to scale this sort of setup. So now I can deal with my 14,000 requests per minute. The only problem, obviously, is that I've introduced another, pro another very expensive process, which is having to calculate all these different combinations of uses and items. But then when I think about it, I don't really need to do that either. I can just take, well, I, can still, I need to still calculate them, but I can take the top 10 or the top 20 and store those in my prediction store or my Redis. And basically when I do this, I have these nice properties 
uh, of guaranteed latency, for easy scalability, to be able to deal with the very large peaks of, in, uh, in traffic, while still maintaining um, a conceptual match to what I was trying to achieve. So we balanced these two approaches. We said, OK, we can serialize our models and make sure that they end up in a Docker container, and then we put them behind the REST API. Um, we chose not to, due to these conceptual mismatch and the um, difficult guarantees on load latency, and instead opted for the uh, caching approach. And um, again, it's expensive to calculate, but that's why tools like Spark exist. Um, and cache is a memory-heavy solution, but if you can deal with a, a, a level of sparsity in your, uh, in your predictions matrix, it's, it's something that can be dealt with. So this is our general architecture. We have our user towards the left interacting with their device. The device in the end calls an API. Now, the user may at this point be either um, opening a page or reading through an article, and we collect these events and we store them in our event data store that we make available to, uh, to Evo to, ver to discern any patterns and visually uh, query the data. Then uh, a modeling process flow, uh, follows, which is in uh, Jupyter Notebook in this case, but it could be uh, uh, an R-based approach or, or anything else. Um, the results are being stored in this caching layer, and this caching layer is exposed through the same API that we have for uh, collecting the data. And what is, what is really nice about this flow is that it allows us to both send out uh, recommendations and alternative titles to the user, as well as collect their response to this. So this feedback loop that I was showing up here at the beginning of my slides uh, comes back into this story and it allows us to basically continuously evaluate the performance of each different type of model that we have online and compare those. Um, and to iteratively learn from, uh, from our mistakes and, uh, and to hope we get better. So, in summary, uh, I think Regiolab's ambitions are very high. I think it's pretty cool for uh, uh, any organization to aspire to this type of, uh, this level of uh, uh, personalization. Um, I'm very glad to be a part of that, actually, and uh, to be able to work with smart people like uh, Ivo and all the other people that we have at Regiolab. Um, I think the first generation res uh, models, uh, the results are quite promising. We're not there yet, but we've built uh, a system that we can sort of, we've started a road where we can start iterating on better and better and better models all the time. And hopefully in a year we'll be able to present way better results than, uh, than what we have now. And um, I think it's important to note as a final note that delivering models to the end user is crucial. So. Uh, just like Ivo said, uh, you can spend months training and creating a perfect model offline, but until it hits your end users, it doesn't exist. And uh, I think we've done this here, and I'm very proud of that. Any questions? <laughs>